Good morning. I'm Shirley Womack, welcoming ministry staff here at First Rockwall United Methodist Church. We're excited to welcome you to the Open Door Worship Service today. Worship is ready to start. Let's get settled and worship together.
Good morning and welcome to Open Door here at First United Methodist Church of Rockwall. My name is Katie Newsom and I am the Open Door Pastor and it is so good to be gathered together with you virtually for worship this morning. As we continue to go to God in worship, I invite you to center your hearts and center your minds as together we worship. child or a child at heart, we have a moment that's just for you. So I'd invite you to maybe come a little closer to your screen and get comfortable as we share in this moment together. Now, friends, this morning we're talking about a story from our Bible. And it's a story in which Jesus is sitting in the temple and he is watching all these people give to God all sorts of different things. Some are giving them money and some are giving incense, some things that smell really good, all sorts of things. And Jesus sees all these people who are really rich giving money. But then Jesus sees a woman who is a widow. And a widow means is someone who has lost their husband, so that her husband had already passed on. And Knowing that she was a widow, it tells us something. It tells us that she probably didn't have as much money as all those other wealthy people that were in there. But she comes and she brings with her two coins. 
And when we read about this in our Bible, sometimes it says two coins, but other times it calls it two mites because a coin used to be called a mite, which is kind of a funny name for a coin. So we talk about the widow's mite, we're talking about the widow and her two coins. So she brings her two coins and she places it in the offering. And Jesus notices because when she gave, she gave almost all that she had. And even though the people who were who were rich gave more, they still had a lot more left. It didn't cost them quite as much as it did this widow. And so Jesus takes notice of this. And Jesus talks about how this is a, a really selfless thing to do, a really generous thing to do, to be able to give so much. And so this morning, children, we're going to be talking about what it means to give. And to, as people who love God, we like to give to the things that help build God's kingdom, that help do all the things that Jesus would have us do, like feeding people who are hungry and worshiping together and providing people homes who maybe don't have them, a place to stay. So maybe this evening when you go home, I invite you to talk with your parents about how you can be generous and maybe how you can give. And maybe you give some money you have to help feed someone. Or maybe you give your time to help volunteer. Maybe to collect food for a food pantry. There's so many ways that we can be generous. Because we serve a very, very generous God. Will you pray with me? Dear God, help us to give just like you give. Help us to love everyone that we meet just as you have loved us. We love you. Amen. Now is the time in our service where we collect the morning tithes and offerings. And as we prepare to do just that this morning, I want to let you know of a couple of different ways you can give. You can first go online to our website and set up a recurring gift. You can write a check and mail it into the church or drop it by. You can also text the letters F-U-M-C-R to the number 94,000 and it will send you a series of prompts as to how to give through your phone. Friends, we are so thankful for your continued generosity that allows us to be the church. It allows us to do the good work that, dis, that Christ has called us to do. And one of those things this past year has been making worship accessible. Because of your generosity, I know we in Open Door have created a permanent live stream infrastructure. And it is our hope right now we are recording services, pre-recording, but we should be going live very, very soon. And it is because of your generosity that worship can continue to remain accessible to the Rockwall community and beyond. And this week, we're going to be receiving a stewardship and pledge information for 2021. It's, it's entitled Earn, Save, Give, and it's based on John Wesley's Simple Rules for Money. And so we invite you to take a look at at this information. It shares a bit about what we have done in the past year um, and offers some guiding principles on how we are stewards of our own finances. And we invite you to consider this information and return your pledge cards beginning Sunday, January 24th. We won't be deterred by this pandemic. Our ministry still continues and the good news of Christ is still heard. Because of your generosity, we can continue to do the work of the church. And because we serve a generous, generous God, may today and all of our days, we too be generous. Amen. To begin our time of prayer today, we lift up the prayers of the church. We lift up those who have been hospitalized, including Peggy Myers and Ed Wheeler and those discharged, including Pat 
Rupert and Jackson Bingham. We pray for the family of Clara Lang upon her death. Services will be upcoming. We pray for Oscar Mathura and his family upon the death of his brother, Sydney, who passed away this past Sunday. We pray for Darla and her family upon the death of John Robinson. Service was held sat Saturday, January 16th. We pray for Rainer Bass's grand, uh, family upon the death of his grandmother, Shirley Bass, and for Katie Gamble's family upon the death of her grandmother, Marilyn Parsons. Pray for Anna Jusco and family upon the death of her son, Mike Jusco. Pray for Jamie Rubush and her family upon the death of Jerry Rubush. We pray for the 62 people that lost their lives in a plane crash in Indonesia and we lift up their families during this devastating time. And we pray for our nation, especially in the midst of the chaos and violence that happened at the Capitol this past Wednesday. We pray for the staff and residents at Liberty Heights and the many other assisted living centers who are experiencing an outbreak of COVID. We pray for all of our healthcare workers and those who have COVID-19. We pray for teachers and students who went back to school, and we pray for our president, world leaders, servicemen and women, first responders, and their families. Would you pray in a moment of silence? Oh, gracious God, we thank you for your nearness to us. We thank you that you are loving and you are near to us and we can experience your love firsthand. God, this time feels so divided, but help us to see you in those that we disagree with. Fill this nation and this world with your peace, O oh God. Bring your healing, bring your love close to us, close to all those who are hurting. Now for a time of intercession, we'll lift up people who come to mind in each of the pauses. We'll name some specific prayers and we'll pray for those people who come to mind. This morning we pray for those who feel ignored and forgotten, those who are alone and hurting. Help us to build a foundation in you, O oh God. We pray for our healthcare workers who have become slaves to this pandemic, who are exhausted, who haven't seen their families, and who are waiting for reprieve. Help us to build a foundation in you, O oh God. We pray that we could trust you, God, in such a way that it becomes second nature to be generous stewards. Help us to build a foundation in you, O oh God. And oh God, we pray especially for those for whom no one prays, for we know you dwell in them. 
Help us to build a foundation in you, O oh God. Now we pray to you, Jesus Christ, your Son, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which were worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more in than all those who were contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. May God bless the hearing and doing of this scripture. Good morning, church. American author Annie Dillard writes, Spend it all, shoot it, play it, lose it all, right away every time. Do not hoard what seems good for a later place in the book or for another book. Give it, give it all, give it now. The impulse to save something good for a better place is the sig signal to spend it now. Something more will arise for later, something better. These things fill form behind from beneath like well water. Similarly, the impulse to keep to yourself, what you have learned is not only shameful, it is destructive. Anything you do not freely give and abundantly give becomes lost to you. You open your safe and find ashes. Here, Annie Dillard is writing about writing. This is what she knows to be true about writing that writers should not hoard those magical stories or phrases or images or words for a later date because they're so good for now. And her advice is to give it all now. And truthfully, I cannot help but see this advice lived out in the story about the widow's might that we have read in our scripture this morning. This scripture comes to us in a scene where Jesus and his disciples are in the treasury of the temple, those, that place where all the religious leaders were gathered from all over to bring their financial and other offerings to God. And the treasury was the inner part of the temple. And if you remember things about temples, you remember that the further inward you go, the closer you get to the holy of holies, the place where God was. And in the temple were these coffers, these small, likely wooden chests that were placed all around the room. And each coffer was for a different kind of offering. Maybe one was for money, and some were for incense, and some were for sin offerings like burnt turtle doves and pigeons. And the atmosphere in the room, in the, in the moment of scripture that we are reading, uh, that atmosphere was tense. 
Jesus had just rode into Jerusalem and people were shouting Hosanna and waving palms. And Jesus then sees a fig tree and curses it. And then Jesus walks into the temple and he sees the money changers at work and he becomes mad and he calls them out and he flips tables. And then come along all these religious authorities to ask Jesus all sorts of questions about money and trying to trap him. And then Jesus tells a parable, the parable of the wicked tenants. And immediately, the religious authorities know that Jesus is talking about them. And they are mad. And so then they all start asking him these questions, trying to trap him into saying something that is very plainly against the Jewish tradition. They ask him about paying taxes, about the resurrection, about what commandment is first. And then Jesus begins to teach again. And as he does so, he starts to denounce the scribes. And he says, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplace and those that want to have the best seats in the synagogue and the places of honor at banquets. Then he says this, they devour widows' houses for the sake of appearance and say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. And then comes our widow. Jesus sits down watching all sorts of people put money into the treasury. And many rich people come and put in large sums. But then here comes this poor widow who puts in these two copper coins, these two mites. And when nobody else does, Jesus takes notice of her. And he calls his disciples for them to see. And he calls out every religious authority in the place when he says, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. And when... This story of our scripture gets told within a worshiping community. I'll be honest, it is normally within the context of stewardship, which is the season we are in now as a church community. And this story should be a part of our stewardship conversations because this widow is an excellent model to us as a how to be good stewards of all we have, even when it feels as if it costs us. And we tell this story and we think about stewardship in the context of money. This woman gave very little, but proportionally, she gave a lot because she gave almost all that she had. But I think we also have to be careful when we look at this story because sometimes we can read this as if Jesus or a preacher is valorizing poverty but I don't believe that to be the case. This story is about the widow's offering, but it's also a cautionary tale about the temple and its religious authorities. It's Jesus's definitive statement that the widow reflects the kingdom of God more than these priests and more than these scribes. And it's a moment that condemns this value system that has motivated her action and condemns the people who recommended her to do it, even when those same people wouldn't do it too. And it reminds me of something I experienced when I was working as a chapel, uh, as a chaplain. <laughs> uh, in 2014, I was working as a chaplain at Methodist Medical Center in Dallas. And I remember visiting an older woman named Jane who had been in the hospital for quite some time with cancer. And every afternoon, I would stop by to say hello and check in on her and see how she was doing. And every afternoon that I came and did this, I would find her watching a televangelist on TV. And it was the same one every time. And this televangelist told her, 
that if she gave all she had, God would bless her. So almost every week, Jane would write a check that she would send out to this televangelist. They would send her all these trinkets that promised her that if she gave more, that God would heal her cancer. And she was desperate for her cancer to be healed. She would tell me this every day that I visited her. And I'll tell you that as a chaplain, I was really concerned for her. I was concerned that these well-dressed men on the screen were taking her money and buying their mansions and fancy cars and private jets while promising her a miracle healing of her cancer that probably wouldn't come. Because as I know, that's not how God works. But every week we would talk about this and I expressed my concern with her, but she trusted this person on the screen. And one week her two daughters came and they were with her as Jane had officially entered palliative care and was actively dying. And we all talked for a while and Jane kept saying her miracle was bound to come. And one of her daughters pulled me outside of the room and burst into tears, sharing with me that her mother had sold almost everything she had to give to these people on TV for her promise of healing. And this daughter was so saddened that someone had taken advantage of her mother, a widow, in that way. She was afraid of looming hospital bills and funeral costs. And ultimately, she was afraid of losing her mom, which was happening. And within an hour of us having that conversation, Jane died. And of course, Jane was always going to die. And as we all will die eventually. But she was taken advantage of by a system that feigned its care for her. And this is what Jesus is calling out in this story. Even when the rich are parading in their robes, the widows remain. They still have only a jar of flour and only a jar of oil. They still only have two coins. And Jesus is watching. While everyone else is distracted by all sorts of things going on and the power brokers, it is Jesus who points out the widow. It is Jesus who draws attention to a system that leads to this level of destitution and desperation, even as this widow is trying to be faithful. And in our scripture today, Jesus reminds us of this good news. Stewardship is not only about what we give and how much we give, but it is also about what kind of systems and atmospheres of generosity that we create or don't, especially for those who need it the most. Let me tell you about widows in our scripture. They are powerful people. The persistent widow from Luke's gospel has the tenacity and faith to continue pestering the judge until she gets justice. And the widow of Zarephath, who has the tenacity and faith to feed her family and the prophet Elijah until the drought ends. The Bible talks about justice for widows over a hundred times. And 25 books of our Bible contain either instructions about or stories of widows. And they're all clear. If you really want God's blessings, you better be on the side of the widow. Friends, becoming good stewards means that we are on the side of the widow. It means that we take notice of the things and the people that God sees. 
Becoming good stewards means that we create system and structures of generosity. And when we see systems and structures that do anything else, we call them out. So friends, how are we creating systems and structures of generosity? How are we being generous? Yes, with our money, but also with our time. Can we give selflessly? This widow in our scripture is a selfless giver. She gives all she has. And I think that this kind of selfless giving reminds us of what it means to also live in the present. It reminds us that there is no need to cling so desperately to all we have because someday it will no longer be ours. And really, maybe it never was. Maybe it always belonged to God. And as we are living through a pandemic and racial injustice and political fighting and wildfires and so much more, we want to cling on to things. We need stability. We need order and sturdiness in seasons of chaos. And this clinging, this is why we had toilet paper and Clorox wipe shortages at the beginning of the pandemic. At our worst, it's every man for himself. But what if instead of holding on so tightly, we could give? What if we chose to live out of an attitude of abundance rather than one of scarcity? What might it be that God's asking you to let go of? Is it stuff? Is it money? Is it hurry? Is it worry? Is it stress? How is God calling us to be generous today? Are you living in or taking part in a system that hurts those who don't have much? Or is God calling us to create a system of generosity, to create a community of generosity? Friends, I believe that generosity is one of the core qualities of a disciple of Jesus Christ, of one who follows Christ and does what Christ does and goes where Christ goes. And as we seek to be those disciples, we are reminded that we are given the challenge to also be stewards. So as we seek to be stewards of this world, may we know that God always sees us, that God sees us when we are the scribes, lost in abundance and holding on so tightly that we can't let go. That God sees us when we are the disciples, learning about these systems maybe for the first time and how maybe they harm others. And that God sees us when we are the widows and have given almost all that we have to serve a God that we believe is so generous. May God help us as we seek to be generous stewards and disciples. Will you pray with me? Holy and generous God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks that when nobody else sees us, you do. We give you thanks that when we are stuck in these harmful systems, you take notice of us. Oh God, that you come to us to help us heal, that you come to us to help us learn how to find a way out, that you come to us to help us turn around this system so that nobody goes without. God, help us to be stewards of all that we have, money, time, energy, all that we have. And help us to use it as your faithful disciples who follow your first and greatest commandment 
to love God and to love our neighbors as you have first loved us. Oh God, we pray all these things in your name. Amen. This is the time in our service that we call crossing the threshold. It's a moment that you might remember from your high school English class, that phrase, crossing the threshold. It is the moment where the hero in the hero's journey goes from this safe, known place out into this unknown adventure. And we are preparing to do that together, to go from this faith community that we know back out into the world where we can experience anything. And so we invite you to use this moment to reflect. The band is going to share a song with us, and I invite you to take that time to reflect on what it is that God is calling you to do. How is God calling you to be generous? How is God sharing with you the joy of generosity? And how can we be stewards and disciples when we are willing to let go of everything we have and have God as the true foundation holding us up? However it is that God is calling you, I invite you to take this moment to reflect and discover it. Took a hard left, but we're all right. Well, life sure can try to put love through it, but we build this pride. So nothing's ever gonna move it when the bones are good.
perhaps God is stirring in your heart this morning. Maybe God is creating new paths into generosity. Maybe God is calling you to let go of something that you're clinging to so tightly. Maybe you're longing to become a member of our church. Maybe you're longing to get connected in a mission or ministry of our church. We have a lot going on in the life of our church, and I'd love to share some of that with you this morning. For adults, we have our winter studies that are available on our website for you to get connected to, including Methodism 101, as well as a study entitled Rhythms of Growth, Weekly Devotionals and Dialogue that is happening with Reverend Christina Hildebrand via Zoom at 4 p.m. Uh, starting this evening. You can go to our website for more information about that. And upcoming classes will be rolling out shortly as well. Our children's Sunday at home kits are available for pickup in the entrance to Building A. And our online campus is still going strong for our children. It's available anytime. So if you have any questions about that, you can go on our website or contact our children's minister, Jen Lennon. And our children's choir meets every Sunday with Stephanie Campoverde through virtual gatherings. You can check out our children's page on our website or on the Facebook page. And our youth and confirmation class are meeting today at 5 p.m. And you can go to the youth page of our website for more information about that. The plan for our next normal outlines our phased re-entry onto campus. And there are available copies for you on our website or in the church office. And we remain in phase three. Uh, as we have resumed some in-person gatherings for worship, we have a traditional service at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., as well as the open door service at 11 a.m. If you are interested in coming, we ask that you please register your planned attendance online so we can best prepare for you to be here. And every Sunday, we will continue our, our online worship as well. And we thank everyone for the great job that we have all done in adapting to this new way of doing worship and community together. We will be having our annual leadership summit for our church council and church leaders. Uh, and all who are interested in coming, you are welcome. This will be happening this coming Saturday, January 23rd, starting at 9 a.m. And we'll review our previous year and set course for a strong uh, upcoming 2021. And our ARC preschool begins their enrollment online for next year, beginning February 1st. So please go to our ARC preschool website for more information. We have a lot going on in the life of our church. And wherever you are in your faith journey, if you are longing to get connected, if you are longing to ask questions, you are always welcome to come to myself, to Gracie, to Shirley Womack. We are so grateful to be a part of your church family, and it would be our honor to walk alongside you in the journey of faith. So this morning, as we prepare to go forth from this place, hear this good news. When systems are harming those, Jesus takes notice. And when we think that nobody sees us, Jesus takes notice. So may we do our part, being faithful disciples and living out the greatest commandment to love God and love neighbor, as we create systems of generosity, where all encounter God and God's great abundance. And all God's people said, Amen. Thank you for joining us today in worship. We hope you all have a great week and we look forward to joining together in worship again next week. Bye now. Yes, good